What is Sevilla? I had been to Spain before, to Madrid, and to Barcelona, but I always dreamt of visiting southern Spain and Sevilla. The narrow, hidden passageways, cobblestone streets, the history, the food, the things that make Spain such a wonderful place to visit. You will find it all here in Sevilla. Truth be told, I knew very little about southern Spanish culture or Sevilla before I landed. About its people, its history, and its culture. And sometimes, when you visit a place, beautiful as it may be, expectations can be, well, less than great. A complex mix of very old and very new, Sevilla, quite the contrary, was everything I had hoped and dreamt it would be. Home to 1.5 million inhabitants, Sevilla is the capital and largest city of Andalusia. Despite its large population, Sevilla is a compact city that is very easy to navigate and walk around. The area you'll most likely be drawn to when you arrive is Santa Cruz, the exceptionally beautiful labyrinth of narrow cobblestone streets that meander their way past cafes, overlooked by wonderfully charming Andalusian architecture and tapered balconies. So Santa Cruz is the heart of Sevilla. It's a narrow complex of cobblestone streets surrounded by beautiful buildings with ornate wooden doors and shops and restaurants. It's the place in Sevilla if you want to stay where you are in walking distance to almost everything, all of the sites. It is going to be a little bit more expensive and a little bit more touristy than other parts of the city, but that's for a reason. It is so beautiful and it's definitely the place you're going to want to be if you want to be close to everything in Sevilla. The centerpiece of Santa Cruz, of course, is the cathedral. The Cathedral of St. Mary of the Sea, colloquially referred to as the Seville Cathedral, is a decidedly brilliant piece of medieval architecture that is nearly impossible to miss when wandering about Santa Cruz. After its completion in the early 16th century, Seville Cathedral became the largest in the world, surpassing Istanbul's Hagia Sophia. It is a stunningly beautiful masterpiece of medieval engineering, and it is well worth the 11 euro entrance fee. So you can't really talk about the history of Spain without also discussing its existence within the sphere of Christianity. In the Middle Ages, Christianity dominated every facet of daily life. Daily life, in general, was controlled by the church, by Christianity, and by the Pope in Vatican City. And throughout much of Western Europe, in the late Middle Ages, these grand cathedrals started to be built as a symbol to not only exert the church's power over society and society's decisions, but also as a means of exerting profound influence over the daily lives of the people living in these societies and these kingdoms. morning hustle of Seville. People going to and from, just like anywhere else in the world. I, however, am on my way to a new area of the city. But first, 
I'm stopping for some cheap local breakfast in Santa Cruz. So whenever I travel, this is exactly the place that I try to find. I just walk around, because I'm gonna be walking around anyway, looking at the city, until I find somewhere that looks just like this. Super busy, super packed, and mostly locals, um, and cheap. They're pumping out these tostadas with queso or jamon. Coffee is excellent. It's just like a little no frills takeaway spot that you could walk past a million times without even blinking. But the fact that it's there are locals literally pouring out the front door and the counter is full of empty plates and glasses, you know that it is a good spot. Coffee is awesome. The Rio Guadalquivir cuts through the heart of Sevilla, separating the more touristy Santa Cruz and Centro neighborhoods from the slightly more authentic, working-class neighborhood of Triana. Similar to Santa Cruz, in Triana you'll find those narrow streets and hidden passageways, but with a more genuine feel, if you will, than her sister across the river. It has much more of a um, neighborhood vibe, and it's definitely a little quieter than the other side of the river where Santa Cruz and El Arsenal are. The thing to do really in Triana is to just have a nice afternoon, wander around, sit at any number of these beautiful street cafes, have a drink, and just enjoy life. Naturally, as one might expect in such a neighborhood, such as Triana, you'll also find the Central Market. The Mercado de Triana is located just over the Puente de Isabel II Bridge, a historic landmark in the city which links the two neighborhoods and which was completed in 1852. The Mercado de Triana is not your average market. No loud commotion, no hawkish vendors. No, no. Just an upscale, wholesale market selling some of the highest quality fish, meat, and cheese I have ever seen in my life. No, really. Ever. It is um, a bit of an upscale market. It's not something similar to what you would find in like Africa or some wet market on the streets in like India. It's more of an upscale market. This is where you come to get really good cuts of beef or other meats, fish, um, and tons of produce. Oh, and there's food stalls. Selling a varied mix of classic Spanish and Andalusian fare. When you're finished exploring the market, you can stop for a very affordable, very delicious lunch and some of that icy cold, cheap Spanish beer I had so much of while in Sevilla. things that make Spain such a pleasant place to travel, one would be remiss if they did not mention explicitly the food. Spain, point of fact, may just be one of the greatest places in all the world to eat and be hungry. And of course, there is that one glorious quintessential component of Spanish gastronomy that deserves special mention, the tapa. Tapas originated sometime in 18th century Spain, where hungry travelers were served small portions of dishes by innkeepers on a tapa, or pot cover in Spanish. Many could not read or write, so menus were seldom used and food was simply offered to guests. Tapas are, at their simplest definition, small plates or portions of food, and you can combine tapas to make whole meals, or you can simply stop for a long afternoon siesta, enjoying a tapa or two, and a glass of that cheap, frosty Spanish beer. So one of the truly spectacular things about this country is tapas. And they are essentially served all throughout the day and night at almost every restaurant and cafe that I've seen so far in Sevilla, where you can just get a assorted variety of fish and meats and cold dishes and um, cured ham 
for relatively inexpensive prices. They're small, you can get like three to five of them and it'll cost you like 15 euros with a beer and it's really, really fantastic. They're light and you can just really eat your way around the city without getting like overburdened by having like so much food. Reasons to love Spain. Right here. To really understand the history of Spain and that of Sevilla, one must also understand the fascinating interplay between Christianity and Islam. In the early 8th century, the Iberian Peninsula came under the rule of the Umayyad Caliphate, the second caliphate following the death of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Two centuries later, in 913, a fortified compound was constructed on the grounds of what is now the Real Alcazar under the guise of Abd al-Rahman III, the first Umayyad Emir of Andalusia. Following the Christian conquest of Sevilla in the mid-13th century, the Alcazar was converted to a residence for Christian monarchs. Additions and improvements over the following centuries give us the Real Alcazar that we know today. The royal family of Spain still occupies the upper floors on visits to Sevilla. Archways, courtyards, ceramic and tile inlays showcase an imposing palace with provocative juxtapositions of Islamic, Christian, and Moorish art and architecture. The first thing that strikes you when you enter this residence is the ornate courtyard here. And on all sides of you, you can really see the influence of Moorish architecture and Muslim architecture as this was a Muslim residential fortress before it was conquered by Christians in the 13th century. The palace is also adjoined by a vast network of interconnecting gardens overlooked by towering palm trees and fruit trees. Distinct stone fountains, lush bushes, and roaming peacocks greet the mesmerized visitor with every turn. Like any self-respecting royal palace, behind it you find these immaculate gardens. They are laid out in a grid pattern, almost like a, like a city would be laid out in a grid pattern. It's the same way with these gardens. And they are huge. They just seem to stretch on forever and you can kind of just get lost back here wandering around. Seeing this palace is Incredible. I love this stuff when I travel, seeing these cathedrals and these palaces that are hundreds of years old. It's, as someone who loves history, it's really, really fascinating to me. But, I mean, what could be better? Walking around in a beautiful palace garden with the sun setting and peacocks wandering around? I mean, in Southern Spain? Yeah, it's pretty great. It's my last night here in Sevilla. I'm just gonna get some dinner and go pack. But before I do that, I'm going to go get something that I've been eyeing since I got here. And in Sevilla, that could only mean one thing. Salted, cured pork. Maestro Marcelino is an upscale wine and tapas bar located in Sevilla's Centro neighborhood. They specialize in all those things that make me so happy, most notably fine cuts of meat, varied wines, and olive oils. And of course, that one glorious staple of Spanish cuisine that you find all over Sevilla, cured pork leg, otherwise known as prosciutto, is fantastic here. Salty, fatty, real prosciutto, prosciutto done the right way, is absolutely nothing like the imitation stuff you see in the grocery store. 
Supple, savory, notes of sweetness contrast with the saltiness of the cured pork. Paired with a good drink, it is food heaven. Alright, see now this is just the perfect meal. As far as I'm concerned. Salted cured meat, blood sausage, and beer. Now, if you've seen my Montenegro video, you'll know just how much I love this stuff. The blood sausage, or Morcilla, is really light, sweet, it doesn't taste anything like you. If you've had liver before, you know that like irony blood taste. This isn't even close. This is almost savory. It's so good. If you're kind of grossed out with the blood sausage, I guarantee you if I didn't tell you that it was blood sausage and you ate it, you would be like, this is one of the greatest things I've ever eaten in my life. This cured pork needs nothing. Just eat it with your hands as is. Cold beer, cured pork, and a view out onto the bustling Sevilla streets. Do you know of anything better? I think not. I came to Sevilla searching for Spain. Spanish culture, Spanish history, and Spanish food. With her quaint, labyrinthine, cobblestone streets, wonderfully complex food, and beautiful kaleidoscope of history, culture, and religion, Sevilla was everything I hoped and dreamt she would be. It is a city that captivated me from the moment I arrived. Thriving bars and restaurants, as well as a rhapsodic atmosphere, give Sevilla soul. Sevilla spoke, and I listened. In the end, then, perhaps, we can trace the heart of Spain to the south, to Andalusia, and to Sevilla. Mm -hmm.